What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 65 of the King's Speech Podcast, the podcast you can learn from, listen to, relate to. I'm doing it off the fly, so I don't know if it's 100% correct. I'm two guys who realize the streets and the club only look fun on television right now. What's good, Josh? How are you? We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. back. You missed us? Indeed. Um, I think they did. I think they did. She's missed us. Mm -hmm. Where where, where, where y'all at? (laughs) A lot of you have been asking. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no one's been asking. <laughs> um, what's going on, man? I'm in I'm in the state of the uh of the Super Bowl champions. Super so it Bowl feels champions. Good to be, it feels good to be on this side of town, you know. I can't complain. Also, didn't get snow yesterday, so really feels good to be on this side of town. No shade, just stating pure facts of the current situation. You know, sometimes facts can be shade, right? Like, you know, sometimes like a, a, a fact can still be shade. I'm working on um, delivering things and not worrying about so much on how it really comes off. You know what oh. I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, you figured out a classy way to say fuck your feelings. I like that. That's cool. That's cool. That's I'm, lying, right. I'm lying, bro. I'm lying. I'm lying. <laughs> you got that from Malcolm and Marie? <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm and Marie was slightly triggering. <laughs> just slightly, <laughs> just slightly for you. <laughs> I was triggered like a motherfucker. I was. <laughs> I fell asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep on it. Also, we're gonna deep dive into that in a few weeks. Yes. Yes. Um. Pause. Um. Yeah. Pause. Okay. How's your uh? How's your weeks? Your weeks been? How's uh, how's life down? You're a dog dad now. I am a dog dad, girl dad, girl dog dad. Hmm. Um, that's been cool, man. Uh, first three days were rocky. Um, she didn't like crate training. So like, we were like those neighbors. We were the neighbors with the loud dog that was barking throughout the middle of the night. Okay. At like four o'clock in the morning. We were those guys. And that's embarrassing. Talk about a walk of shame out after <laughs> a night of your dog barking. It's, it's really tough to, you know, I literally got dirty looks. Is it, it was, like a like a deep bark or like a shrill, no, like a high pitched bark? Like a, know, ah! Wow, there it is. That's it. That, okay. that was it right there. Okay, that was <laughs> first, good. Try. First, <laughs> first, first try. First try. First try. First try. Okay. Um, yeah, it was along those lines. But no, she's been great. Um, and then her and Kim had some alone time, and I don't know what happened when I I left, but I came mm-hmm. back, and she does not bark during the night anymore. So, mm. kudos to the magic powers. Yeah. Some female bonding. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Oh. But she stopped she stopped barking and I can never be more grateful. Maybe they watched like a Beyonce video together. They got they got so, I think they were watching some Meg. Kim's a Meg. A mm. Meg girl. Mm. Knees, you knees. Let your, ooh, let your let your little puppy look, look at Meg. She grown enough for that? What has my puppy seen so far? Your puppy's gonna be tooting it up at the dog park. She no, something she's, crazy. She's a lady lady of the class. Okay. Any of class, young, young bitch, though. Young, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> young classy bitch. <laughs> young classy bitch, you feel me? Okay. Um, right. How's and your we mean bitch because a bitch is a female dog, ladies. Don't, please don't cancel yeah, us. Please, yeah. I'm, talk- <laughs> I'm referring to my dog, the bitch. Yeah. And- <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. My week's been good. Um, you know, just like going through life, working, uh, you know, navigating. I'm moving in. With my uh, with my girlfriend in a few, I want to say the end of March. Look at this! Look at this reveal. So I've been. Oh, I didn't think it was that big of a reveal. Oh, I didn't think. I, mean, I didn't think that was update. I mean, okay, go ahead, continue. Yeah, no, I don't think you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm like this trying to big, sell though. my this furniture. Nice. It's a huge deal, of course. It's a big it's a deal. deal. I'm, I'm trying Absolutely. to reveal it. I'm trying to yeah. reveal. I'm trying to, I'm trying to sit here and Paul. You're trying to glaze over it. That's Are you trying to get I mean. me excited? Trying to get me hype? All right, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yes. Finally, you're letting the pod know that you're moving in with Shorty. This is a yeah. big deal. Don't glaze. I'm, I'm getting the chance <laughs> to move in, share space, the woman I love, and I couldn't be happier. Look at this king. Say it loud, it's crazy, say it proud. right? Indeed. In Black History Month, it's just thriving. But I'm adjusting though because, like, I'm trying to sell my furniture. Yes. Because she already has furniture. Because you know she's an adult. Yeah. Um. Yo, yo, doing adult relationship has to be so wavy. That's refreshing. It's different, huh? It's extremely refreshing. Real grown and indeed, and and, and, 
probably black and white, probably still probably layered with, you know, men and women things, whatever. But, yeah. you know, it's probably a lot easier because it's like, yo, she has her stuff. Yes, yeah, nice, nice to date a woman that doesn't live with her mom and dad. Remember when five minutes ago when you're like, yo, some, this, <laughs> some facts. <laughs> <laughs> the shade. Some facts are shady. This episode's called the shade because that, yeah. that was a, that was a shady yeah. ass fact. <laughs> but it is nice though. It's it great. is very great. It's great indeed. Yeah. Don't have like you know full either or is great. You know, find the beauty and everything. That's, that's, I'm that guy now. <laughs> I, am, I am Mr. Find the beauty and everything. That's a good thing. That's a good way to be. It's yeah, a good Trump's way to like, live. Fuck the beauty. <laughs> fuck the beauty and most things. And most things. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I'm doing that. So I am adjusting myself mentally just to share space with another human being. I haven't done that in a while. Okay. Um, okay. But I'm looking forward to it, though. And we're very transparent with each other. So um, I'm pretty sure we're going to be really successful. Actually, I'm not pretty sure. I'm very certain that we're going to be successful and it's going to work out the best way it can. So I'm excited about it. That's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. but I'm just like any guy. Like, you know, I'm going to miss just like sitting around in my underwear playing video games and uh, not paying attention to anything else going on in the house. <sighs> talk about it. You know what I mean? Talk, talk about yeah. it. You know what I mean? Dream yeah. about it. <laughs> Ponder on it, nigga. Because <laughs> that's all you get. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. I'm going to have to like be really selective of the websites that I browse while in open view of everybody else around. I'm gonna have to be very wary of that Never as well. Never been that guy. I don't know. I can't relate. What do you, you mean? Watching this, you be watching it in open view. What do you mean? Oh, no, I mean just in the place. Not like in, I'm not sitting in Starbucks. No, I mean you be you be watching on the big screen. Are you a big I screen pulled, guy? I pulled it up on the big screen a few times. <laughs> that, that's a session. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're committed to <laughs> you're committed to ten to fifteen. <laughs> I mean, sure. they say it's they say it's HD. So let's really see let's, let's how see. HD. <laughs> I got it. Is. TV. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Oh man, 4K is crazy. You can say the daddy issues in those movies when you watch it in 4K. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to all the uh, daddy issues. Shout out to all the <laughs> women who moved their daddy issues into our entertainment. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a wild start. All right, <laughs> but we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> With this, yo, let me ask you the craziest question I'm ever going to ask you while on Absolutely. a virtual Zoom. Yeah. Um, I have I I struggle with temptation sometimes, right? Uh huh. With certain things. So right now there is a bottle of coquito right now, an arm's reach away from my fridge. Can mm -hmm. I get that real quick? Can I get that? You gotta wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> First off, like, are you so you just drink coquito year round? I mean, it's 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 still January. It's still it was three it's kings. Not it's, it's not January. Not January. January. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was damn my whole bro. It's still it's still those months. Yo, first of all, I'm in Florida. They have Coco Lopez year round. See, it ain't like New York where you guys like Coco Lopez just for the just for the holidays. So yeah, love, coquito can happen whenever. I love how you reference everything with I'm in Florida. Because there's no rules or laws in Florida, apparently. Yeah, it's lit. It's a free state, apparently. It's lit. It's lit. Mm, it's lit. Something else is lit down there, too. What? What? That, them COVID numbers, that's lit down there, too. Yo, you you know, you talk about the numbers every week. What numbers? Give me some numbers. Give me some real numbers. I don't know. Put, I've got number fatigue. Yeah. I'm tired of numbers. Yeah, all you do is say numbers, but you don't even go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It, it could be more in, in the New York metropolitan area than the entire state of Florida, and that would be crazy. We don't know. But about this Coquito, yeah. Yeah. Within That's arm's good. reach, you're, listen, we can, you can wait till our first break. We, you're, you're a strong, <laughs> strong-willed black man. Okay, let's Strong go. Strong-willed black man that has so much willpower, <sighs> so much strength. Man. It's Indeed. really good, man. It's really delicious. It oh, is. I had, I had a few, um, a few sips this, uh, this holiday season. None Shut in February up. yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> I've had any okay. coquito sips in February. Are you mad about that, brother? No, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Okay, not yeah, mad. you're missing out because February um, coquito is good. So, um. I sent you the topics, right? Like I yeah, updated yeah. it, sent you stuff. Okay, so um, I changed it up because like the outline that we have was still for last week. So honestly, I just want to go few, go through a few topics, get in and out of here like a robbery today. Okay. Um, of course, 
the most pressing and recent news, Tom Brady has got his seventh Super Bowl ring. Seven of them things. Two plus five. That's seven. That's crazy. Um, you watched the game last night? I did watch the game. Um, we hosted a little something here at the crib oh. uh, with some Florida friends. Uh, cool. How many friends? Uh, under the uh, CDC guidelines, actually. Oh, look at that response. So you got yeah. your facts. I don't. You good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. no, I think it was because uh, our home, um, even though it'd be a two bedroom, the living room is not the most accommodating for like mm-hmm. plus five. You feel me? So mm-hmm. um, we had about. 10 of us, I would say. No more than 10. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was as if Cuomo was in our backyard, you know, just regulating, but we did good. Awesome. Awesome. Shame. Um, How'd you feel about the game? I mean... Game was um, underwhelming, man. It was like... I'm doing this thing where I, I'm overhyping everything. I'm overhyping mm-hmm. the movies I want to see. I'm overhyping the games I want to watch. And then when I go into it, I'm like... Because like, you're like, yo... Brady versus Mahomes. This is going to be action-packed fireworks, 50 to 50, nail-biter. <laughs> so I'm just expecting some shit. We uh-huh. didn't get no shit yesterday. So it's it's, a, it's my fault. I need to dumb down my expectations and um, just go into that and appreciate what I get. With that being said, a little underwhelmed. What about you? Extremely underwhelmed. Um, I mean, I watched the whole game. I, I mean, I watch whole games because I like sports. I like football. Of course, of course. And I just like to see, you know, the post game, see who the MVP is going to be, which is obvious from about like the second quarter on who the MVP was going to be the game. Yo, um, why, did he, why was it so? Yo, why was it so easy though? Because it's Tom Brady, and that's my. That that's was like crazy. this. There's so many expert analysts on television that are going to give you the X and O's and the defense and the calls and the this and the that. But ultimately, it's Tom Brady. And ultimately, it makes no sense to bet against Tom Brady. I uh, did that yesterday. Goof. <laughs> Goof. <laughs> Patty Mahomes passing of the torch. Ooh, MVP. No. no, man. And the funniest thing about that is, like, I texted my buddy. And I was like, yo, what are you feeling? He was like, yo, I'm conflicted because, like, you just don't bet against Brady. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, if there's one thing that history has taught us, this was a text that I sent them. This is why I feel like an idiot this morning. I'm like, if there's one thing that history has taught us, it's never better against great Brady. And that yeah. was that was the end of the conversation. What did I do? I was like, yeah, put the money line on Kansas City. <laughs> okay. Mm-mm. It was a five dollar bet, but still, come on. In our last episode, I picked the Packers to beat the Bucks. And that was stupid. Okay. Yeah, that was stupid. Yeah. And, and and like in my head, I over I was overthinking the game and not just looking at it black and white that Tom Brady is the quarterback of one team and then some other nigga is the quarterback of the other team. Like some that, other that's, nigga. Yeah, that's 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 what they that's what he turns them into. Like Aaron Rodgers is some other nigga. Patrick Mahomes is some other nigga right now. Like that's boy. it. Boy, it was he was running for his life. Today. Yo, they want his ass. It was rough. Yo, I never seen Patty scramble so much. And like at one point, it was like, "Wow, look at look at him make those sidearm throws on the run." And it was like, "Yo, my nigga, why is he always running?" Yeah, he was gonna. He looked like he was gonna die if he got caught. He looked like he had all the black women chasing him because they were mad he's got a white woman pregnant. That's what it looked like he was. She's running pregnant from. now. <clears throat> yeah, his very mediocre looking fiance is pregnant now. Come on, Trev. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, speaking of Pat Mahomes, do you consider Pat Mahomes black? Yeah, whatever though. <laughs> what do you mean? Whatever though. But when you look at Patrick Mahomes, you're like, that's a black man. Do you feel that when you see him? No, I don't feel that. But whatever though, you feel me? Like it's because he has to, like he gets he gets the pass. So whatever, you know. That's like literally how I feel about that situation. Like it like it's not just Pat Mahomes. It's in that situation. Like you give me that. That color, that voice, that those that hair, and you ask me that same question, and you tell me that his dad was half black or his mom was half black. I'm like, yeah, whatever, man. No, his dad's black. Like his dad's like black, black. Right. So you tell me his yeah. You say, all right, cool. You tell me like I mean, yes, I mean, you tell me his dad's black, his mom's white. I can't take that away from him, man. He's a black man. I don't. Know. It's weird because I look at him and I don't really see like. Black man, like just look at this, like black man quarterback. I see that when I look at Russ. They should have their own race. 
I've seen that one. <laughs> if you can't really di- differentiate between them. <laughs> what are they? He's he's the mulatto quarterback. Mulatto yeah, Mahomes. Look at this <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm Mulatto Holmes. <laughs> mulatto yeah. Mahomes is wild. You know she changed her name. Who? Mulatto. Is she? To what? Big Lotto. Cool, man. You know? <laughs> Big Lotto. Big Lotto. Yeah, because Mulatto's offensive. So it's big lotto now. But anyway, back to the game. Um so behind. It's um it's important to not bet against Tom Brady. It's important for people's finances not to bet against Tom Brady. Yo, people made some money last night though. They did, because we're I was the watching the Chiefs, Chiefs the favorites. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, I think the Chiefs were the favorites. Um and uh they probably anybody who bet the under on the over under came up big because we all thought it was gonna be such a high scoring game. But the Chiefs couldn't even score a touchdown, which is crazy to me. What? Is that? Yeah. And then uh, I read a, an article where... Yo, that said, was so humbling. It has to be. Like, they do what they want to do to everybody else. No it's humbling, touchdowns. man. Yo, football's dope for that. F- football's dope because that's not... The story goes either way. The stories are great on either side, I feel like. Yeah. The Brady story is amazing. Right, it's leaving crazy. leaving the Pats, going to the Bucks, in one season winning the Super Bowl, we will mm. never see no shit like that ever again. The dude is fucking he's 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 the goat, right? Yeah. But like on the flip side, like the 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 Pat, Patrick Mahomes story would have been just as amazing. Back to back to Super Bowl MVPs, like it could have went either way. And I, like I really appreciate, I guess the the storyline of football, like. Or, or really the storyline that comes with sports. Like, it's dope. Mm-hmm. Either story would have been dope. I'm happy for it. I think with football, it's the stories are... Like, football has the best stories in yeah. sports. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the storytelling has been so great over the past... Storytelling uh, the, is like, intense. The rivalry. years. Yeah. The music in the background. Yeah. The old oh coaches' God. voices. Who was that nigga who did the intros yesterday? I was uh, like, uh, everyone, Lombardi. shut up. This nigga was talking... <laughs> It was uh, Vince Lombardi, and then um, just so much goes. That's why I feel like the Super Bowl is probably the hardest championship to win. Yeah, man. Because you got to go undefeated every playoffs. Yeah, man. Tom Brady's done that seven times. You know, LeBron was walking back out of the tunnel after a 12-game road trip, and he was like, yeah, all mental. Mental never gets tired. Like, no, Tom Brady deadass is really that guy whose mental never, like, he lives that. It never wavers. I wish, like, like these are moments, like, when I watch games like that, like, I wish I was in the huddle. Oh, my yeah. God. Imagine the feeling of knowing, like, bro, being on the Bucks, Mike Evans, A.B., yo, the biggest story, A.B. got a ring. So what's A.B.'s biggest accomplishment in the past year? Him getting a ring or him meeting Tiana Trump? He met, uh, he... Never mind. Next. Anyway. What's been going on on, on Oprah's <laughs> internet? <laughs> Oprah's what? internet is a wild place. Anyway. Are they friends? Um, something like that. Did he leave his wife again? I don't think he left his wife. This guy. I just want you, when you were done, to Google Tiana Trump and AB and then erase your browser history. Anyway, yeah. Tom Brady in the huddle. What? <laughs> if you're... <laughs> Yo, Tre- Trevor just sits there and actually he doesn't have my phone number. <laughs> That's crazy to me. You ever just yeah. sit down and like talk to your homie and just realize that like, he just does not hit you? Like you just did not hit me? I'm going to be really, really honest with you. I wasn't thinking about anybody else when I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Very selfish thoughts. <laughs> Extremely. Shout out to AB getting a Super Bowl ring last night. Indeed. And to all the great accomplishments that he's accomplished. Yep. Accomplished, <laughs> a, accomplished young man. Um, but like Dropped said, an like, album. This, <laughs> what a guy. Like, what a year, huh? <laughs> rapper slash athlete. <laughs> rapper slash athlete. <laughs> Cut from the league. Super Bowl MVP. You know what I mean? Like, he's just champion. here. It's crazy. Wow. Man. But yeah, the confidence that you got to have being a teammate of Tom Brady's is probably like no other, you know? 
if Tom Brady tells you go get it, you can go get it. I, you know you can go get it. Yeah. yeah, I can go get that. I'm not going to question that. He sees it. He got to see it. Indeed. That's it's, empowering, it's, it's, man. It's remarkable, man. And um, I texted you. I asked you, like, your list of your five goats. Because I feel right. like goat is used so freely and so yeah. frequently yeah. when not everybody is that, right? Like, they're a goat for the moment or a goat for a playoff series. And then after that, we don't hear about them for a while. So I want us here at the King Speech Podcast to establish who the goats are. And these will be the only people referred to as goats on this platform. Everybody else can be great. Everybody else can be all time. Everybody else can be Hall of Fame. But these will be Trevor and Josh's goats. So this is, this is good. All right, so yeah. I'm gonna preface this by saying that my goats are based off of my short lifespan of watching sports. Okay. Right. So things that I've witnessed, greatness that I have witnessed. So when I when I speak on goats, is the things that I've witnessed and and and, and can speak to. I mm-hmm. can't speak to shit I ain't see. Respectfully. Fair. Very fair. Personally, for me. So when you, you know what I mean, so in, in this regards, to this question. So. That's why I preface this by saying, would mm-hmm. you like to go first? Um, you can go first. Okay. My goats, Tom Brady. Let's just yep. start since we just came off his neck. So I'm still on his neck. Tom Brady, Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, and Shaquille O'Neal. Mm. Those are my five. Those are my five. Shaq goats. is an interesting one. Shaq to me is up there because I can't really think to, like your to your point you started with is like goats like not just for a, a, a time like someone mm-hmm. who really did this and Shaq really did this like could Shaq have been better we can argue that all day long but was he dominant like yeah mm-hmm. yeah so I'm gonna give it to him cool um and then I see also of course uh, the Kobe ties, and um, you have Kobe and Braun and Shaq, very NBA and Mike, NBA heavy. Super heavy NBA list. heavy, super Indeed. NBA heavy again, also bias. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool, good list, great list. Um, so these are established in our in our goat list. These are all goats for the King Speech podcast right now. We're going to add a few more with my list. Um, so my first, of course, Tom Brady. There's not going to be any other quarterback never. or NFL player that's going to win no, seven I've Super never Bowls. Never seen that. That's what. What is that? Not in our lifetime. We're not going to. That's not going to happen. What is that about? Maybe Patty though. Maybe Patty. But no, nah, because he just lost one. So, just lost one early. Brady lost exactly. Brady lost one early. No, nah, Brady started off three and zero. Brady well, was three and zero in his first three. Okay, but th- Patty has time. Does he? Yes. No, nah, Brady's an anomaly. Brady's 42, 43. Brady, but, but, he's a, but he's an anomaly. Do you think Pat Mahomes is going to be playing football at 43? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But what I am saying is that Patty's not in a bad spot for a young fella right he's not. now. He's in a great spot. Great spot. Great coach. Uh, we just got to see what happens with the team around him. They have those touchdowns now in the Super Bowls. Huh? Got those touchdowns in the Super Bowls. That usually helps. Because usually boost. can't go... Can't go wrong with that. Um, next up, I got. They, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No. Next up, I got Bill Russell. Okay. So yeah. I say Bill Russell because I remember when I was a kid and I would talk about like MJ's the greatest. Like I love MJ. Like he's the best. Colby's the best. Shaq's the best. Like I'd have old heads tell me Bill Russell won 11 championships in 13 years. And the last two he won as a player coach. So that's dominance to yep. me. Yep. I'm with you. I'm with That's you. 11 rings in 13 years. The object I'm of the game you. is I'm to win. You. I'm with you on that. And he won. He went up against Wilt. He went, against, went up against some really great uh, Knicks teams, some great Sixers teams, some great Lakers teams, and beat all of them. No, he's there. He's, he got it for sure. No debates. Absolutely. No debates. Um, you older than me. I'm not okay. Bill Russell old. I don't know that's, if you're trying to imply your that's your that I was watching Bill Russell in Game goal. 7 live oh at the Garden. Bill Russell hit him with the pump fake in the off the backboard. <laughs> that shit. Yeah, I was there. I was there. I remember when um, Bill used to. 
<laughs> First hand account. Yeah. Um, next up, I got Joe Montana. 4 0 in Super Bowls. Um, object of the game is to win. That's what he did. Never lost a Super Bowl. Um, numbers aren't as great as Brady or Manning or Breeze. But I think Super Bowls are the hardest to win, the hardest championship to win out of any team sport. You have to go you undefeated in the playoffs every year. And to do it four times is nuts. And there was a stat also. Um, you know Jason Pierre-Paul, JPP? JPP! Never lost a Super Bowl. Never lost a Super Bowl. Never lost a playoff game. <sighs> He's never lost a playoff game in his <laughs> career. I might retire right now, boy. With, with, with all, with all six fingers, because you know he burned, uh, burned half his hand off. Yo, how does he count his money? Uh, 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 it's crazy. Um, it's cool. Next up, of course, Michael Jordan. You know, self-explanatory. We yeah. we watched The Last Dance. We've seen all the things that he's done. Got, yo, um, I seen that, that quote again the other day. Got chills. What quote? It's like, was I a nice guy? <laughs> But did you have fun? <laughs> I was like, yeah, y'all niggas had fun. They had a blast. Hey, y'all niggas had the most fun ever. They had Shut a the blast. fuck up. We yeah, make don't complain. Make a, don't complain. Michael won't hug me. <laughs> oh, no, he doesn't soothe me. You a grown ass man. Go home with your <laughs> wife, nigga. Try to win basketball games or nah? What are you doing? Oh, my Sorry. goodness. Sorry. Just- um, the last person that I have. Is uh, Muhammad Ali? I like it. Person, when you, so when you said about. that, I looked. I looked into it. And I was like, "What a fucking!" I was like, "I'm such a fucking idiot." What do you mean? It's like I was like, "Look at my list. Look at Trevor's list. <laughs> <laughs> White guys, boxers." I'm like, "Hoops, hoops, 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 hoops." Listen, if that's your list, that's your list, man. Like that's that's totally fine. Like that, everybody has a different perspective on what they feel like the greatest of all time is. I just wanted us to un- to like really establish that that word just can't be no we can't sling that and i think i think like yeah, anything I think, yeah for sure i think out of the 10 me- names that we've mentioned some overlap mm-hmm. we, we 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 establish some timeless names like absolutely. ain't no ain't no ain't no goofs up there you can't even question our goofs absolutely not yeah absolutely oh not so our list is going to be so we have we had three overlaps we had mj we had uh brady, brady and we had who else did we have? I forgot the other overlap because I deleted it. But so this is our list: the Kingsley so, Podcast so, Goat List. Goats. Tom so Brady, Thomas yeah. Brady, Bill Russell, Joe Montana, Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali, LeBron James. For sure, right? Kobe for Bryant, sure, for sure, for sure, Bronny. Kobe Bryant, okay. uh huh, and Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. Goat list. Goat list. I'm There'll cool. be nobody else on this podcast referred to as a goat. When it comes to sports. When it comes to sports. Indeed. So let it be written, so let it be done. Indeed. All right. Stamp it. Stamp, Stamp it. it. Stamp. What else do we got on the on the docket? Stamp it. On the docket. So um it, it's another Super Bowl story. Patrick Mahomes, his fiance, who we mentioned earlier in the uh earlier in the show, and her loveliness. I guess. Um, she was upset that ESPN was publishing Super Bowl photos of Patrick Mahomes looking sad. And I don't know what other photo you're going to get. She's, <laughs> like, bro, what she's... other photo can you get from the Super Bowl? Oh, you know what? This leads me to another great topic. So last week, Lakers were playing the Hawks. Mm-hmm. You saw the game. You saw the interaction. Yep. Fan, a dude. The story is, tale tells it, a dude gets into it with Braun courtside. Mm-hmm. First of all, fan, you just got back. I get it. It's been a while since you got to yell at somebody, whatever. But now my thing is you're going back and forth bantering with LeBron, and then your lady, your wife, your fiance, she gets involved and Ooh. starts chiming in, talking back, and now Braun cussed her out, used the B word on her, and that's not nice for anybody. Whatever. I don't think he said, I don't think he called her a bitch. Uh, I did see the use of the B word. Um, I was watching very closely. I don't know if it was directed <laughs> towards her, but B word was used in Bron's vocab. Yeah. Allegedly. Whatever. Mm-hmm. But now Bron's talking spicy to your, to your lady, right? Yep. So 
Next day, she also goes on, or same night, she posts a video giving her tale of the story and giving this entire thing. And the entire time, I was thinking to myself, this is embarrassing. As a male, if my fiance, if my wife was out here doing this, I would be embarrassed. So Patrick Mahomes, his girl now is making a big deal that ESPN is posting v images of him looking sad after the Super Bowl. Is that her place to even vocalize that, speak on his behalf? And how do you feel about significant others chiming in on certain things that may just be for the male to handle? Um, all right, so for the ESPN thing, first off, I just want to say that there's no, there's no logic in her being upset because there aren't any happy logic, photos okay. of Patrick Mahomes at the, at the Super Bowl. What was he happy about? He got his ass kicked. Right. What would he smile about? Um, and then, listen, like, and women have the ability to say whatever they want whenever they want. That's super fun. I don't think it was super embarrassing for her to do that. Um, it does show a lack of, I guess, like reading the room and understanding that, you know, if your man had a bad game, you should really focus that energy on consoling him as opposed to attacking ESPN because that doesn't help anybody. It's just some other sh another question he has to answer at a press conference talking about a game he got his ass kicked in. So I think it does more harm than good in that, you know, circumstance. As far as the woman at the Hawks game, I don't know, man. Like women sometimes get dudes into situations where they're going to get their dude's ass kicked, shot, or ran over. Because if two dudes are having a, a, a confrontation or a discussion and a woman jumps in, Ugh. I, I, just, I just don't see the benefit in that unless it's like a life or death type of thing. And even There's if it's life or death. never been a good time, man. Then I don't I don't see I don't see how that how that benefits. I mean, it's just like if a guy would jump into, you know, a, two women fighting or two women arguing. I don't think there's a place for that either. Right, right, right. We respect that boundary. If we saw two women, like their version of of, of combativeness would be two women arguing. If a man saw two women going back and forth, right, because they probably won't get to the extreme of fighting unless you're in those type of environments. But for the most part, if a man was to see two women arguing, we wouldn't just jump right in and be like, hey. Like, that's women business. We let that rock. So, like, why, when it's men business? The, my, the thing, I think the, the, the main role that a guy has to play, and, like, we're not talking about violent situations, right? We're just going to keep it to the, to the scope of two people arguing. Maybe it's a heated argument. Maybe words, profanities are exchanged. You know, for me, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm out with, with my lady and I see that happening, I'm probably going to keep a close eye on the activity, see what's going on, see like how what moves are made. And then after it's done, of course, you're going to have to sit there and listen to your girl vent about how this bitch ain't shit. And, you know, she don't even know who a kid's father is and all kinds of Oof. shit like that. Um, and you just got to put the battery in the back. Yeah. Ooh, she wild, ooh, she wild crazy. Ooh, yeah. Her wig crooked. All kinds of shit like that. Like yeah, you just got to yeah, like yeah. feed the beast at you that be, point. You be feeding in? You got to feed the beast. Like, well, what the fuck was she saying? Ooh, she fucked up. Ooh, she, she said stupid. what? She can't read. Huh? Wait, 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 wait. Say that. This is my favorite. This is my favorite. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. <laughs> That's my favorite. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. I can't believe her. What? Yeah. <laughs> she got the wrong one. Yeah. So, bro, <laughs> she is tripping. Wow. Um, but I think, you know, when the tables are turning, there's two guys going at it. I, I just don't. I just don't know how that helps. Like a woman jumping in, I don't. And I don't say that to sound misogynistic. As far as you know, women are really great at conflict resolution. <laughs> no, they're not. Um, so it could help, but I don't think it. I don't think it helps at all. No, it's for safety. Oh my god, my dog just peed. That's what they do. They pee. They pee. And they poop. And they scratch, and they shed. So, yeah. They do a lot. They do a lot. These things. Um, Need a break? Clean it up? Or are you just going to wait? No, no, no. It's fine. It's, it's fine. 
<laughs> yeah, like it's, it's it's not the last time. <laughs> it's not the first time. It's not the last time. No, it's, yeah, whatever you know, whatever. Copy. Um, but have you been in that situation before where like you were arguing with somebody and a, and and a, and a woman jumped in? Yeah, I was. And the conversation after that was like, "Hey, you never have to do that again." Yeah, you only got to do a lot. She didn't wall, right? She didn't wall. She just, we just, I just don't want, I don't want at any point this conversation to t- turn and be directed towards you. Because, because then it becomes, that creates another type of energy, right? It's like, a different energy. Then the original argument you're having with Homeboy Ooh. is just totally irrelevant. Yeah, now it's, now I don't care. Now you spoke to Shorty. Because yeah. you're going to speak crazy to him. He's not going to like that. He already doesn't like me. So he's now in return <laughs> going to speak crazy to you. And he's now, raise his voice. now no one he's here likes Asian shit. that's going on. And I'm double, double jeopardy, man. Feel me? So that's like the way I view it. And I just like, hey, listen, let's just not, you know. Let's just not even go down that road. So I feel I you. Know. But yeah, I just think right now, like Mrs. Mahomes to be, should have just mm-hmm. chilled. Like she should have just chilled. I want her to see if she, I want her to try to find some happy photos. That's what I want her to do. Just, I want her yeah, to watch that give game her, again. Give her the camera roll. Yeah, I want her to. I want ESPN to be like, "Hey, you can find some happy photos. That's cool. Go go watch that game again and see if you find some happy photos. So go watch that game after the kickoff and see if you see any happy photos. Nothing to be happy about. There's not. There's not a fucking thing to be happy about. Not the flip toys. They're like, yeah, we defer. Whatever. See y'all niggas later. Yep. Straight to it. Indeed. Um, so this is another story I wanted to get to. Uh, I think we're pretty good on time. Uh, female athlete uh, speaks out against the new Biden executive order on gender identity. I just want to give a shout out to Joe Biden before I even get into this because, yeah, there's been a lot of news politically about his executive orders, but she's been pretty boring. And I like that. Yeah, quiet, quiet. It's been boring. This is the type of politics I love. Love that shit. What's Do going on? They still in the meeting? All right, I'm out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? At 5 a.m., Kamala Harris finally gets to... I'm like, all right, cool. This is lit. It's Whatever. like regular news coming out the White House. Yeah. Like regular shit. No wild shit. Love it. Hope it Hope it goes on yeah. for the rest of my life. Ten, Chen Don. Ten year, 100 more years. Chen Don. 100 more years. <laughs> Peace. Peace and love. Indeed. So um, there is a apparently an executive order that Joe Biden signed off on that um, erases uh, gender discrimination in sports. So Idaho State University runner Madison Kenyon spoke out against President Biden's new gender identity executive order, citing her experience competing against transgender athletes as the reason for signing into a onto a recent lawsuit against the administration. Um, what are your thoughts? Like, if a guy becomes a girl, does he automatically now play in the WNBA like Juana Man? Don't be PC, please. Nah, man. <laughs> you had your chance, bro, to play this at the highest level if you wanted to. Now you're not going to come over here and dominate <laughs> with the Johns, all right? And that's just my thoughts on it. Like, you want to walk around and change your private parts and wear different clothing and and sleep with who you want to sleep with, thumbs up. But some things you just got to let's chill. You can't have everything. We, as heterosexuals, don't even get everything. We cannot get everything. Boy, boy, we you don't get everything. Why, why should y'all get everything? You wanna, you wanna dominate the woman? Yeah, I, I just, I don't see how that's okay. I don't see how you can just decide one day I'm, I'm gonna tuck my sack, I'm gonna tuck my sack in my ass, tape that shit up, put on some pink running shoes, and now all of a sudden, like I'm competing in like in a track meet with other with women, and I'm a man. Yeah, man, like it's like you want to be accepted as a woman, yeah. We got that. We're here now. We're, we're, we're doing it with ease. We're, we're, we're making it cool for you to be cops, for you to be part of the society. You know what I'm saying? But, like, now you want to, what, compete with the women, too? 
No, compete with the men. You was with the men last week. You wasn't trying to compete. I was going to say something really fucked up. Um, <laughs> no, nah, nah, you're 100% right. Like, there's no... Men and women are biologically different. It's just it's just science. So in, you know, different athletic endeavors, men are going to dominate. Um, we talked about, you know, Sarah Fuller playing football a few months ago and um, how it's just not it. Like, it's dangerous. So and then she, from I'm the, so you know. She gets a double appearance on this podcast. <laughs> Why are you mad? Don't hate. Listen, hate they gave her the opportunity. I know. I know. She does. They she gave actually, her the opportunity. She got a she, field goal, though. She, she yeah, scored, she scored some game. points. They gave her the opportunity. She scored some points. Yeah, salute. Salute. Come on. Come on. Salute. salute. No, salute to Sarah Fuller. But no. Uh, no, salute to her personally. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Like, salute. 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 We absolutely. did it. We did it. We saluted. Big, <laughs> twice now. Big facts. Big facts. Um, yeah. Next up, uh, we can go over your topic. You had uh, the the Joe Budden Patreon topic. Yeah, man. I so big news last week. Um, and get to it. Mm-hmm. Joe Budden brought the podcast over to Patreon. Um, are you familiar with Patreon? What are your thoughts on Patreon? Have you heard of Patreon as a podcaster yourself? Talk yes. to me. There's a um a page uh sorry a podcast I listen to called Flagrant Two. It's like a comedy sports podcast. Okay, and they have um content on Patreon that okay. I haven't paid for. So but you haven't paid for? No, but I I am familiar with Patreon. Okay, and, so but um, you don't listen to them yeah. on Patreon. Uh, I did. A f- I actually like paid five dollars to listen to like a f- like a few things, but. To me, I didn't see the benefit because I didn't really feel yeah. the difference in yeah. that situation. Even though I think it's a great show, like I listen right. to it weekly on, um, like on their free platforms. But I just didn't think like I, I was getting anything out of spending money on it. Gotcha. Yeah. Um. So basically, Patreon for those listening, it is a platform where creators can let their fans become active participants in the work they love by offering them a monthly membership. It's basically like only fans for podcast. And then you give them access to Spicy. exclusive content, um, community insight to your creative process. Basically it's like, I've never been the dude who bought the double pack DVD, right? <laughs> you go to, you go to the spot, you get, you get the DVD that came with, the movie, and then there was a bonus DVD with the behind the scenes and the extra yeah. and alternate ending. I was never that guy. So it was nine ninety nine and nineteen ninety nine. I always paid nine ninety nine. <laughs> I'm him. Uh-huh. This is who I am. Okay. With that being said, I love the Joe Budden podcast. It's my main podcast that I listen to outside of the King's Speech podcast. So I'm going to listen to them always. But I have never been the guy to pay extra for extra content. I respect it. I love it. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. I think it's phenomenal, but definitely not something for me. Saving for a wedding. Yeah, no, no, I feel you. Um, I think it's for the person that is just, you know, loyal to that brand. And they mm-hmm. have a lot of mm-hmm. people, millions of people that are loyal to that brand, which is dope. Um, as a creative, it, it feels really good to be compensated for the time you put in to create um, so I think from that standpoint, Patreon is, a, is an amazing platform for people who do that. Salute. Um, and I'm I'm willing to pay. Honest, like I'm a guy that if I see something that I feel like is going to be value added as far as, you know, stimulation or entertainment, I'll pay. You know? Um, I respect that. I can respect and I'm, that. And I'm, I'm, and I'm cool with that. And and, you know, and I'm cool with it when I feel, if I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. Right, right. That's the thing as well. It's it. I mean, there's they have different packages, different levels of pack. Uh, yeah, I'm cool with it if I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. And uh, if you know, it's. I mean, like the 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 appeal to Patreon is that it's more, I guess, like edgy, or it's more raunchy, or you know. But then it seems like you know, for on the, for me, it's it's a it's a it's a double edged sword because it seems like you're you're gonna, you're gonna go harder on that than you are on what drew people into your brand in the first place. Right, right. And right. to me, that's not something that I really that I really fuck with. 
I don't like the compromise on that. Don't water down my content. Yeah. At the expense of giving people extra pizzazz. Give them niggas mm-hmm. extra pizzazz because you got extra pizzazz to give them. Exactly. You feel like what I mean? give it like give it like give it all the entire time. Like if you want to just say, hey, like we're adding more content, yeah, but not necessarily better content, then that's cool. You know, as long as the, the quality stays the same across the board. But cool. You know, I can't I can't say on here, hey, like listen to us for free. And then after that, hey, pay five dollars a month and we'll really get to the shits. I just which is true, though. Kind of. I mean, We'll give it up for a quick little cash app. Well, I would give it up for a cash I app. feel like, I don't know. I'm, I can't, I'm not going to speak for the both of us, but, you know, we, we, I don't feel like we're not, we're definitely not PC, but we definitely like are considerate. For sure. I, I go into this thing every day thinking, I just, I, every day I talk to you, I, I see Kim's face. <laughs> <laughs> I also record with Kim in five feet away from me. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, this is probably one of my last few times recording in a space by myself. Yeah, well, no more f bombs and no more porn, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the porn. Not the um, uh, but I, I feel like we we do have like a filter, and I do feel like if I feel like the the compromise is, I feel like a woman would be fine if we took the filter off, if there was a vacation behind it. You know how to read their hearts. <laughs> well, there's, there's one thing we can tell you guys right now. Your ace of spades, okay? <laughs> Not sure what card to drop. You know what I mean? Your trump card is always a quick trip. Always. Always. <laughs> always, always. Hold always. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Explain. <laughs> got a deal. <laughs> yeah, Expedia keep, got something nice today. Look at that. Keep that in the tuck, boy. Indeed. You should, yeah, keep that in the tuck. Cheers. Yeah, but I feel like if if we, if like, let's say we have a Patreon and we're charging like $15 a month and we're on there talking crazy, talking crazy, crazy, crazy shit, nasty shit, ridiculous shit. You're a freak. That at any point in time, we get both of us kicked in the dick, but then we get the, but then we got these subscriptions and it's like, hey, you can do, you got two options. You can kick me in the dick. You want to be an OnlyFans guy. Or we can go back to Costa Rica. You've been pu- you, you're, pu- you're pushing for an OnlyFans on the low, aren't you? What do you mean? <laughs> that, sound like, that sounds like an OnlyFans pitch. You're like, yo, I know it's a little risky, but <laughs> if it pays the bills. <laughs> I'm not Safari. I'm good. I'm straight. I can't, I can't give it up. No, nah, I, I can't be on OnlyFans just like jacking my shit with strangers. That's crazy. That's wild. That's I'm crazy not even cool when I do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I got no swag to it. <laughs> Yo, next topic. Okay. So yesterday's Super Bowl performance. Oh, um, salute to the Joe Budden Podcast. You know? Salute yeah, to them. I, I, salute to us. Salute to us, please. So, someone salute us. Scoop us. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about was the weekend's performance at the Super Bowl yesterday. Yep. Um if you can't see, I have my hands. My thumb is in the middle. I'm going to go to the right for up, and I'm going to go to the left for down. Trevor, what do you got? You can even right there. You don't got to move that thumb. Right there in the middle, right? Right there. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's what we'll just give it, right? Like, if we wouldn't say and go out and be like, yo, that was a bad performance. Also, it's breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Tom Brady apologizes to Matthew after Super Bowl. I, I don't like the apology. Yeah, I don't like the apology. Either. Keep the same energy. I don't give a fuck. Like if he, I know he said some wild shit to him. Tom, I know Tom Brady said some wild shit. To Tom I right think now. both. I think. I think. I don't think Matthew backed down at all. And I think Tom no. didn't like the fact that he didn't back down. And I respect it as a young nigga, bro. I'm going against the goat fan, but like I, I love guys who have that attitude of like, yo, you're the goat. I respect that. All praise and homage to you, but I also want to win a Super Bowl, fam. Yeah. You you I didn't kick need Nick. The apology. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. I'm, we're competing at the good. highest level. We're not good, but we're good. Like we're good on the apology. Yeah, like, you're good. Indeed. So that was breaking news. Um, um, but the weekend's performance, I, right in the middle. Are you a fan of the weekend's music? Um, I used to like so like college came through. House of Balloons came. I moved to uh-huh. L.A. I was in my sad boy vibes, big time. Yo, what's up, man? I can't be vulnerable here on this podcast. This guy thinks that's funny. 
That's funny to you. <laughs> sad boy vibes is funny. What did you do when you were sad? A little boom bap, a little Nas when you were sad. Queens niggas have the worst sad music. <laughs> Fucking G Unit when you were sad, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Beg for mercy, got me through some tough times. Yo, what's up? I can't relate. <laughs> no man. <I'm, laughs> I left my girl back home. Uh, oh my gosh, she don't love me no more. I miss that whole. I miss that whole sad boy vibe. Yeah, that you sad be, yo, boy wave. I miss that. You didn't whole wave. have to be sad. I, like I, I, I remember that driving. Whole wave. Remember when we were doing retail. Yes. I remember driving to Abercrombie. Before I started working at Target, I was manager at Abercrombie & Fitch. I remember driving on the coldest day, coldest day, at like 6 a.m., holiday week, mm -hmm. driving Abercrombie & Fitch in my staff dress, plaid shirt, jeans, rolled up, chucks, and I'm just listening, bumping to the weekend, 6 a.m. in the morning, sad boy vibes. Good time, man. Hmm. Good time. That's good. That's okay. That's great. I'm not a huge fan of the weekend's music. I like a few songs. I like the yes. hits. Yes. But I can't listen to a. I've never sat down and like listened to a weekend album. Because I, I like a lot of the stuff. I just don't. Man, I don't rock with. I, I he's that. really talented, really successful. Uh, I thought he was, you know, probably like the perfect. I mean, I, I feel like this is like an edgy choice as far as like a Super Bowl performer because he's he's got pop hits. But his image isn't really that clean cut. Um, yeah, emo boy, and emo sad yeah, boy. Yeah, emo drugs, shit like that. Like that's that's kind of his bag. And I thought it was cool that the that the um, the Super Bowl people said, "Hey, like he can perform for us because his music is dope." But he does have all that other like you know um, other stuff like around his head and experiences he's had that could be considered not you know. Not PC. Yeah. So no, I'm with you. I'm, I'm I definitely with you. I thought it was great that he got the that. opportunity. Huh? Yeah. I, th I think it's great that he got the opportunity. Would have loved to see Griselda perform at the Super Bowl. Nah, I'm yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, yeah, can't relate, my nigga. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, man. I've seen the weekend perform live. I think he's really dope. I just, for mm -hmm. me though, like I'm used to Super Bowl performance, mega performance. And like so for me, again, it goes back to like wanting and having this expectation going into shit. So I'm, uh -huh. and also Kim also said the biggest lie in the world yesterday, which I don't even know why I was so excited about in the first place. But she was like, it's the weekend and Ariana Grande. And I was like, say what? Like, that's going to be crazy. Like, she has that new album that you I, play all the time. I love, I love how Ariana Grande just gets you in your bag. No, no I, didn't, it, I didn't get my bag. But like, I was say like, that's what? just a... I didn't, I didn't do that either. It was more of a sur <laughs> surprise and delight. You know what I mean? So I was excited for that. And then um, no Ariana Grande and no guest. The Weeknd did it solo, which was cool, but we've seen like people bring people out. And I like that aspect of it. It's like. Yeah. The like surprise that. guest is a great little like wrinkle. That's we always that. really, that's always really that. dope. But who could he have brought it out, brought out though? Ari, sure? bro. He could have brought out Ari. Ari who? Ariana Grande, dude. Oh, 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 oh. oh. You're not up with the nicknames? Um, no, I, I'm Ari Lennox. There's a bunch of Aris. Oh, um, I'm not bringing out Ari Lennox. Why not? I prefer Ari Lennox to Ariana Grande any day. But the weekend, though. I guess. Yeah. You know. um, I think you got anything else? Any other topics? Any other, you know, thoughts? <sighs> That's all Random I got, man. Just... During the week? No man, I've been low. I've been still still low. Really? Yeah, still very low. Very very low. How you dealing with that? How you working through that? It's amazing, actually. <laughs> I love it. That's why I'm staying low. Like it's great. Like, oh, you I'm, mean low? Like just like out the out of the loop, out, man. Out, out of the loop. loop okay. Out of the social loop. Out of dog dadding, and I'm chilling at the crib. I'm back to work. Um, I got some things I'm working on. So, like, mm -hmm. I've just really just been, like, kind of, like, avoiding as much. Like, I'm not I'm not sitting here from a place of, like, a glass house. I'm just saying that, like, right now, like, I can't indulge in too much distractions. So, I'm staying Respect well. it. Indeed. Yeah. I'm doing my best to focus on, you know, real important stuff on a daily basis. Like, I'm setting reminders in my phone again, calendar invites and shit like okay. that to myself okay. on my phone okay. again. Okay. You know, to get important shit done because, like, I don't want to be in the place in a few months where it's time to move and I'm like scrambling. Yeah, man. Um, just 
proper preparation. Yeah. So step by step, week by week, like I'm getting rid of shit and just keeping myself organized and like mentally preparing myself to, you know, cohabitate with somebody. Um, so it should be what you a know, good time. What a good should go, time. Should go great. Um, did you last thing? Um, do you have you use Robin Hood? Uh, Kim does. And she will okay. let me know uh, every other morning that we made some money. Okay. Nothing crazy. You know what I'm saying? We're like we're like flirting with it here and there. Kim is the um in charge of the house. <laughs> I am wait, hold on. Yeah, what do you mean in charge of the house? It's the boss, man. That's the boss. Nah, she the... just like she likes stocks. Like Kim is like really good with the numbers and stuff like okay. that. I um I am more like I'm not really into the stock game. Um, so like when it comes to like that kind of stuff, um, I let Kim take charge and kind of like educate me and, mm -hmm. and I learn. Um, so yeah, I would say that's why I say she's in charge. So is she's it more, uh, nigga don't ever get a twist. You know what I'm saying? It's for life. You know what I mean? Okay. Say that with some more bass next time. <laughs> um, did, uh, did she get caught up in like the whole like GameStop stuff, like GameStop thing with it was up and now it's all the way down and shit like that? Um, she did not. She was a witness, a bystander of, of, okay. of GameStop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I made, I want to say $100 off of it. Okay. And then I'm pussy. So I just sold. Okay. Before like it. Like, so you were in there when it was going up. it down. Yeah. I was in there for a little while while it was going up. What could and, uh, what was the most you could have possibly made? I think a hundred was the by the time I got in, I think a hundred was the most I could have made. Oh, all right. Because so then, out of here, cuz. Because it was up to like I was I was up to like 150, and then it started like plummeting. Okay. And then once it was like your return as a hundred dollars, I was like, sell, sell, sell. Right, right. And then right. I think it went up a little bit more than that, and then it came like plummeting down. I saw a uh a, like a screenshot in this uh in like this facebook group of this guy that like didn't sell his shit and was just like holding on to his stock and he lost twenty thousand dollars yeah i don't have it in me for that stuff see i've been I've i been, don't i don't have it in me um a buddy of mine showed me on a flight the other day he was showing me a stock and as he was showing me the stock it like kept going up and down up and down and i was like this is not good for my anxiety it's stress. Yeah, it's very. It's it, very it will definitely make you anxious. It's very stressful sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do it with a lot of money, so right. I'll have maybe like ten dollars deposited in like a certain um, like share every week, and Kim then as just well. do it like that. But it's been building up over the past few months, right? Right. Um, and it's saved money that like accrues, you know, value as it's in certain places. So I think as long as you fuck with it the right way. It's good. Yeah, if you play it right, it it works out for you. I feel like it's a game. So the same thrill that you, like everyone's experiencing with Robin Hood, I am also experiencing with FanDuel. Mm. Yeah. Same same. But game. I would Yeah. But I mean, cause the way that we at least that I've learned, because you know, everybody on Instagram is everyone, a everyone's a fucking advisor financial. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time. Everybody. Robin yeah. Everybody. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool. It's all right. Yeah, um, it's like the best way to save money is to have it in stuff that grows. Yes, no, and absolutely. A, and I'm not an advisor. I don't want anybody to say, "Hey, Trevor told me to do something." I didn't. I didn't tell you to do shit. All I said was save your money in something that grows. That's it. Anything I, else should um, be beyond that. Get that information from somebody else, not me. I'm with you. I think I ha so like my the way I see it. And like this, this sports betting stuff is like it's like my little side like play play because like anyway it doesn't really matter. But like so I do like five dollars here, five dollars here, like no, no more than twenty dollars a week. I do have like stocks like that are in portfolios that just let like, do their own thing because yeah. I again do not have what it takes to sit there every single day. So I put it in a little Merrill Lynch account and let it do the thing that it did. Yes, it's, it's not. It's not. It's not. I have a um yeah I have a fidelity account for that also like it's in like different mutual funds, it stays there. I put yeah. it in every week. And it's good. And that's cool. It's easy. I'm at that. Yeah, yeah. To save your money and stuff that grows. That's it. You know. Like that. That's it. Trade, <laughs> trademark. That's it. Trademark King Speech Podcast 2021. Uh, all right, that's all I got in the tank for this week. That's not bad. Um. 
Anthony Davis out tonight, Achilles. He's been playing like shit. So yeah. So is. my thing is like, oh, and Derek Rose to the Knicks. Real quick, these are just two things you leave me with: Anthony Davis to the uh, uh, his Achilles, boohoo, and Derek Rose to the Knicks. A little long, a little late, but better late than never. On the AD, I think he's not in shape. I think he's out of shape. Just looks out of shape. Just looks tired. Doesn't want to bump. Doesn't want to like yeah. be strong. People are just knocking him around like it's nothing down there, and he's not playing. Maybe he'll get better throughout the season. Maybe he's tired. Maybe he's fatigued. Just another testament to LeBron's greatness because isn't AD like 10 years younger? I'm not running laps on you, you little-ass boy. Exactly. That's nuts. The 36-year-old in practice is like running laps around you. That's crazy. Jumping out of the gym and you boo-hoo and you get hit. And don't, please, 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 man. Because like my thing is like, oh, why did I even start on this? Right, real quick. My thing is like, yo, fam, as a fan, like we knew AD was soft, Right. Like, mm-hmm. we knew that. We knew that was the risk of, of getting him. Him winning the chip is the worst thing that can possibly happen because now he's like, yo, I gave y'all what y'all want. I don't have to go as hard to prove anything to you guys. Feel me? I gave y'all what mm-hmm. y'all want. So he's going he's gonna to skate right now. I don't, think, I don't think he's skating. I just don't Skate. think he's in shape. That's skating. Get in shape. It's a form, it's a form of skating. Um, Deck rolls to the next... I don't know why. Quickly. Exactly. Like you're taking minutes away <laughs> from Emmanuel quickly. Uh, He's playing great. He's not you, playing great? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with you. I think you get rid of you guys still have Frankie. <laughs> he hasn't been playing. Get him thankfully. out of here. Clear up space. I, I'm trying to think, because who's our starting point guard is is Peyton. So the only thing I can think of is that, oh, for you know, Rose moves into the starting lineup and then you, you know, you bench Peyton and give quick, keep quickly his same minutes or put Rose at the two guard or maybe quickly at the two guard because he's still a good Who's shooter. Your two? Yeah. I mean, you guys just do, RJ honestly, you guys can do whatever three. you want. Scramble it, mix it, try it out, and then let us know what worked out next year. Just, be like, just give us, mail us a letter. I don't Talk. know. I, I kind of think of them as trying to make a move to maybe get a playoff spot. By getting Derrick Rose and getting rid of uh, Dennis Smith Jr. Because that's who they traded him for. Because Dennis Smith Jr. forgot to play basketball as soon as he got to the East Coast. <laughs> so. Nigga requested to go to the G League. He wanted to get, he wanted to play. I respect it. He wanted to get some minutes somewhere. Um, But I, 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 that's my only thinking of, of getting Derrick Rose. Is he's trying to make an eight seed, trying to show these guys how to win, trying to be a good veteran influence. Yeah, I like I like it York. for the for those purposes. I do like it for those purposes. Cool. And the Knicks are like what, like two games under five hundred. So you know, it's it's totally. not totally without like out the realm of possibility for them to make you know make a run at the playoffs. I didn't say make the playoffs, just make a run at the playoffs. Maybe playing one of those little playing games that they have uh, in March. A um, little playing, a little uh, what? A, wait, good luck. I mean, we'll see. I have no expectations. It's a good way to be. It's a great way to be when you're talking about the New York Knickerbockers. It's a great way to be. Indeed. All right, y'all. For Josh, this is Trev. Make sure you hit the socials at King Speech 5 on Instagram. <sighs> the YouTube, which is popping. King Speech Podcast on YouTube. Also, also, also the Facebook group as well. Check the Facebook King Speech Podcast. We're on Facebook. Um, we're on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> we're on Mom, Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Indeed, cool. we're on Facebook. Indeed, yeah. All your, all the older people in your family and my family, I have uh, Mon Genetic comments on our videos and like shares them, which is really interesting because she is in her mid sixties, and the things we talk about, I don't know how she relates to, but she does. So Oof. it's dope. I Ooh, love we it. fuck with it. Shouts to you. Yeah, Thank I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use profanity. I'll. Do you want to do that? I'll, I'll get y'all yeah, hear about that. Believe that. Believe that. <laughs> I was just trying to be cool and relate since you were cool and relate yeah. with the things that we do. Yeah. But believe it. Sorry. Whoops. Indeed. Trevor it's didn't cool. say it. I said it. Thank you. Ooh, thanks for that. I need that. All right, guys. Uh, peace out. Talk to you guys next week. Mic drop. Deuces.